Now that we presented that brief overview, let's select one of the channels associated with the confocal imaging and go into things in a bit more detail. So if I click here on the GFP channel, the microscope will make a bunch of noises because it's switching from the fluorescence by eye GFP channel to the CF 40 pinhole Xyla camera channel. You can see that whichever channel is currently active is shown here. And if I click on live, this panel will show me an image of what I'm looking at. If you want to adjust the contrast of this, you can either try clicking here for automatic adjustment. Uh, this will adjust it dynamically. So if you move to a region which is dimmer, um, it will brighten up. That's one option. Another option is clicking on this to actually decide what the min and max uh, display options are and whether you want gamma. And you can adjust these numbers by either typing or left clicking to change the minimum or right clicking to change the maximum. Um, and you can adjust this triangle to adjust the gamma. Uh, you can also display this using a log scale, which can frequently be useful. And finally, by clicking here, you can change the default contrast of the image. And this toggles between different settings. So we have an image uh, that we are seeing live. What is the next step? So the next step is simply to get this image in focus. So it's roughly in a good plane, but let me adjust the focus first by adjusting the focus knob on the microscope. So I'm gonna use the find focus on the microscope to come to a different plane. You can see that it gets brighter. Now, if I had been at this lower plane and had auto on and then adjusted it, it would have adjusted the contrast dynamically. So at this point, we have an image in focus. What's next? So what's next is to adjust the channel settings. And we can adjust some basic ones by uh, adjusting the exposure and laser power here. If we want to make more sophisticated adjustments, we need to go to the channel manager, where um, we have the ability to access lower laser powers by turning on this low laser power mode, as well as more complex settings related to cropping and binning down here. But let's for a moment say that we're fine with these starting settings, and we, got, we want to get an idea of what else is in this sample. To that end, we can use the following option. When we click on this button, it will run a three by three montage very quickly and crudely, but this can be very, very useful for navigation. So now we have an image of, the, uh, of a larger portion of this section. You can see it looks weird. That's because I have auto adjust the contrast off. If I turn that on, I get something a little bit more reasonable. One nice thing about uh, this display mode is that we can use it to navigate. So I can click here and click on a position I want to visit and the stage will automatically go there. So if I now click here and go to live, we will be in that position. Now, if I want to go back to the map, I can either turn off live, in which case the last image I acquired will be here. Or if I've snapped another image, so this actually takes an image such that the map has disappeared. I can recover it by coming here. If I double click on this, I get the map back and I can use it for further navigation. You'll notice that, so for example, I can go to this corner here. So you can see that even though we didn't tell it to save anything, every time we use either this function or hit snap or acquire, which we'll see later, um, we automatically save an image. There are a few other useful things that we can do in acquisition control. One, for example, is to change the particular channel we're looking at. So if we go to live, we can switch between our protocol channels, meaning the channels that are here in our protocol manager, by clicking here. You can see we can just switch dynamically. 
if this is engaged on active channel, we just see the particular one that's highlighted now. If we switch to protocol channels and go to live, it will do both of these. And this will be displayed live such that if I move, for example, using the joystick, it will update as it goes. We can also, if I go back to active channel, so we only have one at a time, once we've focused um, with the focus knob on the microscope, we can start using the piezo, which is a finer focus mechanism on the system that's independent of the microscope to move up and down in the focus. And that we can do here. Now you'll notice that when we just started the software, when I grab this, uh, it jumps by about 30 microns. So th that only happens the very first time you grab this. So when that happens, just go back to about zero, which you can either do by turning this with the with the knob on, on the mouse wheel or uh, dragging it up or just writing zero here and then refocus by eye. So this appears to be some sort of bug in the system and it's possible that newer versions of it won't have it. In any case, once that's reset up properly, we can move up and down and zero will be uh, where we left the focus by moving the focus knob on the microscope. So that's uh, a few useful things you can do, changing channels, changing focus. You can also, if we just stop this for a moment, we can look at a channel that is not in our protocol just to see what it looks like. So for example, we could look at CF40 Xyla in RFP, which I believe the sample does not have. And adjusting this here to be our active channel would not affect the protocol channels, but we can just take a look at stuff anyway. Uh, and that sometimes can be useful. So let me go uh, back to this protocol channel as our active channel. There's a few other things we can do here. We can change the kind of sample holder. So we'll go over this in a separate video uh, discussing how to use multi-well plates. Uh, we can snap images, which I've already shown. We can change the image name. And there's a few other controls here, which I'm not going to go into into much detail because they're not as uh, useful as the things we've described. Now, since we don't want to move around anymore in this sample, I'm going to turn this off so that when I click on the image, I don't accidentally go to wherever um, I, I clicked on the image. Let me explain some useful features of the file manager or the manage files tab. Uh, this can turn into something very messy or it can actually be very useful to sort through your files and look around at the data you've acquired on a given day. So one of the things you'll notice here is that this is uh, cluttered with a lot of old data. So if that happens, you can get rid of uh, all that old data in the list by selecting it all and then clicking on delete selected and then saying remove from list, not delete file. So now we just have the things that we did today, which we can filter on using various criteria. You can mark some of them as favorites um, and just show, for example, the favorites. You can only show the unmarked ones. You can show all of them. You can also show them in this display where you can see the structure of the experiment it had one time point, one Z, one channel and so on and so forth. If you double click on these, it will load that image. So for example, that's this one. This is a snapshot I took of a single region. Um, so this can be really useful uh, to, to navigate the images we take. 